Well, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to the session. Well, this session, well, this chapter, as we see, is about uh, the discrete probability distribution. Like what we have mentioned in our first chapter, like the data has discrete data, it has continuous data uh, for the numerical data. What we have uh, in this chapter will be discrete probability distribution. Uh, then next chapter will be uh, continuous probability distribution, which most uh, we're focusing on a couple special uh, distribution in this and next chapter. Right, so the first term is the random variable. In short, random variables. Right, the random variable well, is a variable that has a single numerical value determined by chance for each outcome of a procedure. Well, it's just uh, defined, uh, well, not only the outcome, but outcome yields to the numerical value. We'll see example later on, but uh, that's what it is. Right, the numerical value, the outcome sometimes equivalent to the random variable, we just define the outcome as the random variable, but in some other case, or most of most likely, the outcome itself will assign them to different uh, random variables, or maybe a couple outcome will assign to same random variable, or so. We'll see an example. Then that's the definition, and as of the other thing called probability distribution. probability distribution could be a graph, could be a table, could be a formula, gives the probability for each value of the random variables, basically. In short, uh, probability distribution is a graph. One is a graph, a table, a formula gives the probability for each value of the random variable. But of course, there's something, or well, should be something like uh, category fits in. 
but uh, that's the brief idea that each of the random variable we define should be a probability corresponding to it, then that steps together could make a graph, could make a table, or could be a formula, how to define the random variable, right? how to define it, then those together is called the probability distribution. Well, let's see an example. We're tossing uh, two fair coins. So here's the case, right? Example that uh, well, a gambler uh, wins one dollar for each coin that comes up a head and lose two dollars for each coin that comes up a tail. Right? Then let the capital X be the random variable that denotes the winning. Right? So to illustrate or to build the probability distribution. What we need, uh, what we need is uh, first of all the simple space to toss in two coins. So uh, we have two heads, or first is head, second is tail, first is tail, second head, or both are tails. Right, that's four different outcomes of uh, the two fair coins are toast. Are toast. Right, then the winning which is the uh, random variable x denotes. Right? Well, for each head is win one dollar, for each Tail that's lose two dollars. Right, so if uh, both of them are heads, then the gambler will win two dollars. Right, one dollar, one dollar. Then if the first is head, second is tail, one dollar winning, losing two dollars, that will be lose two, uh, lose one dollar. And similarly, it doesn't matter which one. Is head or tail, right? First is tail, second is head, also lose two dollars. I mean, lose one dollar. Then, if both uh, of the results, uh, the coin lands on the tails, then it will lose two of the two dollars, that will be lose four dollars. Or in money, we have positive value two for gaining, the, gaining money. Then negative one for losing one dollar, negative four for losing four dollars. In total, that's one, two, three, four different outcomes getting to the likelihood of uh, three 
uh, random variables. Then into the probability distribution, we can build the table. We can build the table of random variable x and the probability of x. I have two dollar swings. I have lose one dollar or lose four dollars. Right, in four different cases, that's one of the case to win two dollars. That's two cases the person can lose one dollar out of four cases of course and that last one case the person can lose four dollars right the person lose uh, loses uh, loses four dollars and that table here is a probability distribution right? and the variables are simply finite and countable that is a discrete probability distribution right? every value is one two three different values is clearly being showed over here So that is a basic example how we illustrate how, how we build the probability distribution. Right. When we say the discrete random variable has either a finite or countable number of values, like what we have for the winning and losing, well, that could be win two dollar, lose one dollar, or lose four dollars. That's the three, which is finite amount of random variables, and some other values are continuous random variable, which are infinitely many without gaps or interruptions between them. Right, the discrete random variable, like what we had seen before, could be number of eggs a hen lays every day, or number of people attending certain event. Right, or like uh, when you're tossing two coins, number of head we get. When we uh, giving birth to 20 kids, number of boys uh, they have. A right, continuous random variable could be amount of milk a cow can produce, or amount of time uh, you go to a line you're waiting for, 
uh, those are continuous random variables. Then from the table we have seen before, right, the probability distribution has uh, some requirement. Oh, see. In order to make or to become a probability distribution. Right, so requirements. Right here is a discrete random variable that we get uh, the x values are the value of random variables. Then each probability of x shall be between 0 and 1, which means uh, each one has to be a probability. Right? That was the uh, axiom from the uh, probability before. Right? We say to be a probability, it has to be between 0 and 1. My second every random variable of the uh, distribution, the probability should have a total value to be uh, 1, or exactly 1. Well, sometimes it could be differ by like 0.1% or 0.01% because of the rounding, but most of the time if it's provided, then it will be nicely provided to get the summation of your probability to be 1, and uh, both of the requirements should be satisfied, right? The probability is to be a probability. The summation, the total probability uh, should be 1, right? which means uh, it's either one, the first one or the second random variable or uh, the last random variable, either one to be happen, right? The, the likelihood of uh, everything to be having that will be one which is uh, the first one or the second or the third the likelihood of the union to be having will be one that is what it is right, so two conditions or two requirements must be fulfilled the first one is each p-value need to be between zero and one and the total should be equal one right, so e either one doesn't fit then we say it is not a probability distribution. It may happen. Right. So let's see. Well, the question or the example here, right? Does the probability of x equal x over 9 for x values, which are the random variables, are 2, 3, and 4, 
represents a probability distribution, does that represent a probability distribution? Right, so two conditions we both need to check. Right, they say PR of x equals x over 9, so probability of 2 that equals 2 over 9. Well, we see 2 over 9, 3 over 9, 4 over 9, which we check. Everything is uh, between 0 and 1. Right, the first condition it uh, satisfies. Right, every value is between 0 and 1. That is what we see over here. Right, and to check the second one, the summation. Right, the summation of each one, that's P of 2 plus the third, not third plus 3 plus probability of 4. We'll get 2 over 9. 3 over 9 and 4 over 9 which when we add them together, right, 2 plus 3 plus 4 that is uh, 9 right, then for the second one Satisfy also, right? The summation or the sum of each probability is equal one. So both of the condition satisfies. Now we can say yes. But in some other case, even maybe one of the one of the uh, condition doesn't satisfy, then we can say, well, no, right? that's not. Those uh, thing doesn't form a probability distribution, right? If, if uh, either one of the case or maybe both doesn't satisfy the situation or the requirement. Right, such thing that uh, for the random variable x that's have negative 1, 0, and 1, probability of x to be 0 0.5, negative 0 0.2, and 0 0.7. Like uh, the two conditions said, each one has to be a probability, which means has to be between 0 and 1. The second condition is the total to be 1. I right, find this so called probability that well, 0.5 is okay. The negative 0 0.2 cannot uh, uh, satisfy the condition, uh, even though the total we can find is uh, 0.3 plus 0 0.7 is 1.0, but that is not the probability distribution because uh, we have a value is uh, out of the range of 0 and 1. Uh, between 0 and 1, we say, well, that is probability out of that then the negative 0 0.2 is not the probability. Right, so the first condition fails. In that we can say no.
All right, the next part is uh, mean, variance, and standard deviation for the probability distribution. For the probability distribution, which is similar as the uh, what have, whatever we have seen before, the frequency distribution. Right? I hope if you remember that formula. Right? But in this case, it looks similar, but just defined uh, differently, totally have different meaning. And the formulas the mean of the probability distribution, since that is the distribution, uh, whatever we're using is the population mean and the variance. Right, the mean is the sum of x times probability of x which is still the looks similar as the weighted mean instead of weight here is the uh, probability right, that's different meaning which is uh, the random variable corresponding uh, probability instead of uh, the value corresponding weights before over here, variance. Variance, we use the notation of uh, sigma square uh, because it's the uh, distribution. which is the summation of x squared times the probability of x minus the square of the mean. Then, of course, uh, the standard deviation will be the square root of uh, variance. My standard deviation is simply just sigma is the square root of the variance. Well, that's the formula. Right, for this uh, probability distribution, like what we have seen uh, of the tossing two coins, winning one dollar for each head, and the losing two dollar for each uh, tail, uh, coming coming lens, that is the winning money, a uh, winning value, which is the random variable here, and the uh, probability uh, corresponding to it. Right, to find the mean and the standard deviation of one bet. Right? That mean is the summation of x times probability, the variance is x squared times the p of x, which means uh, we need to attach two columns. One column is uh, x times p. The second column will be x squared times probability. Which experience we have seen x squared times p r of x is uh, x times p which is the third column multiplied by our x again. And we need the layer sum. 
Alright, so x times v, 2 times 0, 0.25, negative 1 times 0, 0.5, negative 4, times 0 0.25 and the summation here is negative 1 the second part we need x squared times probability we take x times x times pr of x these two columns multiply them together 1 0 0.5 So 5.5 as the sum. Right, therefore, we have the sum, so we will find uh, all these things. Right, the mean is uh, the column we find. We could give the bracket, you don't have to. That we find the value is uh, negative 1. Right, the sum of the third column. And variance. is the summation of x squared times probability minus the square of uh, the mean. Which is 5.5 minus the square of negative 1. The square of negative 1 you can find out is uh, positive 1. Then we subtract it by uh, from 5.05 that we get 4.5 then the here is the mean here is the variance and here is the standard deviation the standard deviation will be just square root of uh, the variance And we get a value of 2.12. Right, so here we get the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of this probability distribution. So we just attach two more columns, which uh, I feel that uh, we can, we have the idea of it already from the previous uh, chapters. Right here, it's just something similar. Then the next part is the expected value. Well, the expected value, in other words, is just uh, the mean. Right? The expected value of a probability distribution is uh, just uh, the mean.
Oh, which is denoted by E bracket of X and it, rep it represents the average value it represents the average value of the outcomes which means uh, you have one group of very random variable you do one experiment and you expect to get the uh, mean value to be out as the uh, expect uh, as the expected. Right, so the note as expected value is the mean of the uh, distribution. Well, which the expected value is in other words the mean is uh, whatever we had seen the formula. Right. So that is the expected value. Let's see some example. I bet 50 cents and select a three digit number from 000, 000 to 999, which basically that will be a thousand different option. And uh, of course, that is only one winning number. If you get the winning number, you collect $175, but in the beginning, you use uh, 50 cents to uh, play the game. And therefore, your next game is $274.50. Right, and if you not get the correct number, then, then, then you lose your 50 cents. I suppose you play the game once, what is your expected gain or lose? Right, so from here we have the uh, event. To be either winning or losing the game. Right, and uh, the Random variable or the outcome or the money we get if we win a game that's 274.50 of the rent of the uh, net game, and if uh, we lose that game, 
we just lose our uh, 50 cents. And only one number is the winning number, that's a thousand number in total. So uh, one out of a thousand. is the likelihood we can win the game and 999 over 1000 is the likelihood we lose it. Alright, so multiply them. Alright, to find the expected value is the same way to find the mean. We have uh, the product of x and p. For winning, that's the uh, x times p and uh, 999 over 1000 times negative uh, 0.5. Right, then the expected value will be the sum. which are the sum of these two values, right, that's uh, negative 0 0.2 to five. Right, so it's about uh, 22 or 23 cents losing. Expect to lose 23 cents for each game, of course, for the game, right? If you lose, you lose. If you win, you win. But uh, that expected value is uh, in the long term. I right? suppose you play the game once, you either win or lose. Right? But that is the expected value means uh, for the long term, uh, maybe 10,000, 100,000 times you play, you are expected to lose. 23 cents of each time you play. Like you in the in, in the middle, you either win or lose, but you'll figure out that at the end, that maybe the expected amount of money you lose, right, for each uh, time you play it. <laughs>